remember, all money comes into existence from loans. There has to be an initiator. Every single dollar in all of your wallets is owed to somebody by somebody. And this again leads us into the heart of the disease. The economic monetary based system or the game as I like to call it because that's all it is. That's all it ever was, a game. And we can change the game anytime we want. We just need to convince those who are winning the game to put down their pieces for a moment and ask themselves if the game they are playing is really going to reward them in the long run. In a report coming out of the AFP, there is growing evidence that the current rate of our resource exploitation indeed has a time frame. The report states, quote, as it is, humanity each year uses resources equivalent to nearly one and a half Earths to meet its needs. Said the Global Footprint Network, an international think tank, we are demanding resource, excuse me, we are demanding nature's services using resources and creating CO2 emissions at a rate 44% faster than what nature can regenerate and reabsorb. This means that it takes the Earth just under 18 months to produce the ecological services humanity needs in one year. And if humankind continues to use natural resources and produce waste at its current rates, we will require the resources of two planets to meet our needs by the early 2030s. A gluttonous level of ecological spending, in their terminology, that may cause major ecosystem collapse, the report said. Now, by the way, I want to point out that people hear that and they have a Malthusian notion. They think that our consumption patterns are somehow inherent and they're not going to change. I read a statistic recently and for my new film I'm going to put, uh, do a huge section on waste attributes of certain industries and what I've come to find is that of all the production that's done on average 75% is waste. 75% is waste. Of all the materials that are created and put into circulation and taken out 90% of those end up in landfills I believe within six months. This isn't about some natural human thing that we're doing. This is about the social system's obsession with constantly consuming for the sake of economic growth. In an analysis done by the IRRC, by 2025, it's predicted that two-thirds of the world will experience water scarcity. Two-thirds of the world by, world by 2025. Many seemingly wealthy countries are already turning to desalinization processes. In turn, over one billion people are starving on this planet. Do you, with everything that we have discussed, think that any of these things are going to get better, given our current financial crisis? And again, in case you haven't figured it out, the problems of water scarcity and food scarcity is indeed 100% economic. There are many types of desalinization processes which could take salt water and convert it into clean water in all of these poor countries. But guess what? No one has any money to implement these types of solutions in poor countries. The same goes for food. We've gotten to a point with scientific invention that we don't even need arable land anymore, which, by the way, is eroding at a rate of about one inch a year due to the abusive agricultural methods that are being utilized. Uh, please note, it takes about 500 years for uh, fresh topsoil to emerge. Hydroponics and aeroponics alone, if applied correctly, could provide for all the world's people without the wasted water resources in part and the excessive need for nitrogen-based fertilizers. In fact, you could build these facilities on the land that is, in, is depleted in stories. You could have skyscrapers, if you will, of organic food production on an industrial level. But once again, who has the money to do that? And on an extremely enraging and sad note, the more we experience social breakdown, the more human exploitation, crime, and abuse will occur. While here in America we think that slavery was abolished many decades ago, the fact is there are now more slaves in the world than any time in human history given the definition of slavery. However, this time it doesn't come from the form of owning people, it is simply the globalization attribute of exploitation for cheap labor. I'm going to stop here um, as far as talking about the negative attributes inherent in our system along with the ongoing social collapse, which, by the way, I personally can't see an end to for a very long time, if at all, frankly, until we move into something more sustainable. 
the personal and private debts, for example, are so high right now that it's going to take another a number of bubbles to burst before any type of so-called stability is going to occur. Anyway, before I go on to the final section of this talk, which is essentially an introduction to the Venus Project and a resource-based economy, let me summarize by saying that the monetary paradigm, economic structure as we know it, is again the basic systemic source of the majority of the world's problems we have around us. In this system, if this cancer is allowed to grow unabated, spreading its malignant propensities across the globe, utterly decoupling from the natural world and the carrying capacity of the earth, destroying the finite resources we all share, we are on pace with nothing less than something that no one can even consider of a collapse. And I'm not talking about waking up one day and there's nothing anywhere. It's not like that. It's where slowly it arose to a point where the values and the culture and the awareness becomes so distraught and so confused that the levels of quality of life become justified, where you start to accept less and less. And it's going to slow everything down to a crawl. And invariably, there will be some dramatic accents, if you will, of severe problems, especially when it comes to the energy crisis that is looming. Something radical has to be done. We are approaching a terminal stage. Part three, treatment. There are two angles to consider when attempting to resolve these problems. The first is the mentality of the culture, as we've discussed before, the cultural programs. And the second is the actual structure of social operation. As noted earlier in our discussion, these two attributes are deeply interlinked. However, regarding the first issue of cultural conditioning, we need to employ what I call, as a movement, we need to employ what I call social therapy. Social therapy refers to adjusting a society's values, changing the value programs. We must have sustainable values in order to have sustainable practices. I would suggest that the first program that needs to be uninstalled from our mental hardware is the social distortion that generates conspicuous consumption pushed forward by the corporately aligned advertising agencies. The value orientation of having more and more stuff, regardless of their utility or function, is an unsustainable ideology inherently on a finite planet. Consumerism and materialism, again, are sicknesses, culturally created to perpetuate the cyclical consumption needed to fuel the market and labor system. This is precisely what the Zeitgeist Movement is trying to do. We can't do anything until people understand the need for this direction, which is why we're, why we're here right now, which is why this is being webcast, which is why those involved in the movement are diligently working, not to create infrastructure yet, but to try to get these values out there. We will address the movement directives in the second half of the program. Beyond that, as far as the actual structure of society, I'm afraid we require nothing less than a complete and total revision. And this is where the Venus Project again comes in. I'm going to run down five of uh, what I consider to be the central attributes required to move into a resource-based economy. One, we must move from a growth economy to a steady state economy. The cancerous consequences of the infinite growth paradigm must be stopped before it's too late. In the final analysis, given our technological ingenuity at this stage, we propose the absolute, absolute elimination of the monetary system itself. There's no reform possible to stop what the system is doing. The scarcity and waste we see around us is created by us, not some intrinsic process of nature or some Malthusian inherent tendency. The need of money is no longer relevant and is extremely detrimental, in fact. Second, we must move from a primitive, competitive, invention-oriented system, work system, to a collaborative system. Not only are all goods produced in our current society inherently inferior, by the way, due to the need to maintain a competitive cost basis in the marketplace, but the competitive system also generates massive amounts of corruption. Yes, I agree. The incentive to compete does produce some improved goods and services to a certain degree, but that positive is utterly overshadowed by the planned obsolescence, the inherent planned obsolescence, and the general environmental indifference generated by the necessity to stay ahead of someone else. As an aside, imagine for a moment if the top engineers of the major car companies, rather than competing, got together and decided to collaborate on making the best car possible at a given point in time. Imagine if we established an incentive system that pulls people together to create the best 
rather than compete and produce inherent inferiority. Think about that. 